Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. If you watch YouTube and like photography videos, there's no doubt you've definitely come across our next guest. I recently took a trip down to New Forest to catch up with photographer Mike Brown to talk about his work and his life in photography. Remember, if you like what you see on The Photo Show, please comment, like and subscribe in the boxes below. Here's the brilliant Mike Brown. Mike. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this. You're <laughs> very welcome, Dave. <laughs> um, I guess we yeah, was almost start right at the beginning and just ask where did photography start with you? What was what was your first sort of ex contact with photography? First contact was when I was very young, was about six, right. and I don't know why my parents said, "What do you want for your birthday?" And I said, "A camera." I can't explain why. I just said I wanted a camera. Okay. And I got a little one twenty roll film something. Right. Yeah. Lens, yes. Yeah. Something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Uh, yeah, that was the first contact. I just wanted to take some pictures. I don't know why. I you know. There's no sort of specific subject that you thought, no. yeah, I'd like to take that, or you just wanted a camera. I was just six years old, and I thought the idea of a camera would be good. Pretty but... cool six-year-old, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of lost interest fairly quickly, I have to confess. Right. Within about a year, you know, like lots of kids, it was just sort of probably kicking around in the bottom of a cupboard somewhere, uh, or being stuffed full of bits of bacon, or put a goldfish in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... But um, I suppose, was it the thing that sort of, you know, the, the, that what we haven't got now the waiting time of you know i've taken something it's got to take time to be developed no, and come back to me so. i think it's just childish sort of losing interest and it came back many years later when uh, my brother got into photography his then girlfriend bought him a minolta dslr kit oh right and uh i was earning pretty good money driving diggers and bulldozers and trucks and stuff and uh, we were walking along the road one day and he saw something in a shop window and a london camera exchange i think it was okay. and he just said um that's a really good deal, buy it. And I bought it and I just kind of got into it and it was a hobby for many years. Really enjoyed taking pictures, loved it when I got a good one. Rarely had a clue how I'd got a good one, I was, certainly wasn't in control of it. But And was there any, again, were there any sort of specific subject or was it just anything that caught your fancy and, you know... It, it... Anything. Yeah. And, it's, and it actually is still much the same today. I'm not what I'd call uh, a portrait photographer or a landscape photographer or a... A genre it's I get a buzz looking in the back of the camera or looking on a screen of an image and I don't really care what it is if I think I like that I'm proud of it right yes yeah and that probably so so I guess what I love most the, the photographic if you like genre I like the most is travel photography because it encompasses all of it it could be a close-up detail shot such as you'd have with a product shot or a or a macro type thing it could be a blooming great landscape lots of people shots lots of recording life lots of buzz and action so, so mixing you know getting getting, yeah. getting a, a rounded yeah i mean the thing is as well yeah. i mean that's a really good way of of up in your game in in all set if you if you're interested in photographing a lot of different subjects you're you know you're um, knowledge of how to photograph each individual area in photography obviously expands mm. out from there as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, you know, it's, yeah, I, it covers all sorts of genres and, yeah. and I love it. I, get, I love, love life. I love, we just come back from Iceland and, and to me, the images that I like the best were things like uh, not just the mountains and the dunes, but it's like we, I found an old oil drum rusted away almost completely, sticking out of the black sand with the mountains in the distance. Yeah. And I could have just shot with the dunes and the mountains. And yeah, great landscape, but kind of dull, gloomy day. But to me, I just like the human thing of this skeleton of an oil drum sort of poking out of the black sand and the, right. the brown yep. rust on it. Yeah. It's like, we can't win, you know? We're little tiny things compared to the compared to what nature can amazing yeah. world that yeah. we live in. So you started again as a hobby. And was it, yeah, what, what then sort of led it to taking from a hobby into a career in photography? What was, what was the um, point of that? What, what, where, where did that start? Mm, that's quite a biggie. So where did it start? Um, I started, so I used to drive diggers and bulldozers and um, used to go to work on Monday and think, oh, I hate this. Yeah. Um, and something had to give. I'd always wanted to go traveling. I'd always wanted to see something in this amazing brilliant beautiful world that we live in um so one day someone said something at work and i was thinking i'm really coming to the end of my tether with this it was a completely innocent com comment but i just thought if i don't do something about this now i'll never do it right and i literally there and then said to the the boss i'm really sorry i'm about to drop you right in it but i'm going home right now 
I can't do this any longer. I apologize for dropping you in it. If you want to dock my wages, dock them. I'm leaving. And I left straight away. Um, sold all my belongings, bought a one-way ticket to Australia because I've traveled there before and I kind of had some good friends. There was obviously lots of emotional stuff going on with severing ties at that level. Yes, yeah. Uh, via a convoluted path, traveling in Australia, taking pictures, still wasn't doing it professionally, I hasten to add. Uh, went to Africa, spent eight months hitchhiking around in Africa. <clears throat> Life-changing conversation with a wonderful guy that I got to, to meet on my travels. He's 69 years dead now, 69 years old at that time. Um, and he said to me one evening, what are you going to do with your life when you go back to real life? Right. Big yep. question. Yeah. And I was, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I'm, I'm an out of work digger driver I, I don't want to go there i don't want to think about yes, it yeah, you know yeah. i've been traveling all over the world i'm surviving so i guess i'm trusting that something will and he said if you could imagine anything that you want to do what would it be in your wildest dreams eventually dragged it from me that i'd love to do something like photography or maybe writing okay yeah and he said well go and do it then and i said but i can't do that I'm an out-of-work digger driver. And he said, exactly. Everyone goes through life thinking they can't fulfill their most fantastic dreams because they're a shopkeeper or a postman or a millman or a digger driver. So they don't even try. And he said, if you try, you've got a head start over most of the rest of the planet because they're just in resignation. That's a, a really, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's, it's, it's something like a conversation I've had with people before about, you know, people, you, people have this conversation of, oh, if I won the lottery, I'd do this. So Oh, you know, quite often. Too, what's stopping you starting to do that now? Yeah. Why? Yeah, you doesn't have to be on a massive level, but it's, you know, and you're right. The 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 change of mindset is the biggest mm -hmm. barrier for most people. I think. Yeah. Everything yeah. lives. It, Every, it all everything stems with yeah. everything we do in life starts with a thought. Yes. And if we can change the way we think, and Ken changed my thinking. Right. He totally changed it. He'd done very well for himself in life. He'd lived in South Africa for over thirty years. He got kids slightly older than me. Um, yeah, I owe him everything that i'm doing now is a direct link back to ken and i so wish i could go and see him and oh that's a, that's that's give, really yeah just give the man a hug yeah I no this really is it now, things that you know things like that you know, they're rare in life they it's yeah. rare to meet somebody that would yeah. you know change the direction of your life yeah so dramatically that's a that's a that's a huge thing so you can't so what happened then did you carry on traveling or did you say okay i'm going to go back to england mm. and and just... it was a eureka moment yes he's right there's things i wanted to do in africa so I kind of, I planned yep. where I want, I want to go. What do I want to do? I was another three months in Africa with an old car, drove 30 odd thousand kilometers through deserts and what God knows what. Uh, came back to the UK just because I know the rules here. I had no intention of coming back here. Right. But I know how it works here. Yes. So yeah. I came back to the UK and thought, okay, I am going to do it. I'm going to learn. I'm going to get this photography by the throat. I'm going to control it instead of let it control me. And I was going to do teaching English as a foreign language. And the plan was to leave the UK, go and travel, take photos, maybe write some articles for magazines, things like that. Yes. Yeah. Stock libraries, stock agencies, teaching as a backup, plan B, earn some money if I can't quite. Yes. Know, yeah. To, to no, yeah. I it. Wise. So I came back here, found somewhere cheap to live, uh, looked at my options. In those days, certainly employment services were incredibly helpful. I told them what I wanted to do. I actually went on income support for a year. Um, did night school courses, got a student card, went to the Bournemouth and Southampton universities, gate crashed their libraries, watched videos, okay. got books, yep. uh, spent all my time practicing, practicing, practicing a whole year, just nothing else every morning. Wake up and with, was the night school classes in photography? Or, yeah. yeah. So that, and that was that just basic photography, or was it focusing on any particular area of photography? Or it, was it was just basic a... photography. It's like we all need we all need a help. We all need something to push to get the old grey matter thinking yes. yeah. in that direction. And I needed the help to, to start to understand how film worked, how light behaved, what lenses do, what is the impact of changing lenses. I needed that foundation. Yeah. Um, and yeah, okay, I, I'm I'm in an extraordinary I was in an extraordinary position, Salam, that I didn't have a mortgage, kids, things like that. I didn't have those responsibilities. Uh, someone thought my partner in Iceland recently said, "You're Peter Pan, aren't you? You just haven't grown up." And he's absolutely, completely right. But if if life if life worked out that it's allowed you to do that, and that, that's an amazing thing. Like I said, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's rare enough that sort of people get to to follow what they want to be doing, and you know, for it to work out is is you know an even even bigger you know bonus. Mm, it is. It's 
so so from from there you t you know obviously taking like did you ever teach english as a foreign language or did that never never needed no it just didn't happen it's so yeah i don't know a year or so into it and you know i, I, I did all I, honestly there's a cost attached to this it all sounds terribly glamorous but you know there was no money in the background i was living right. on 40 quid a week there was many nights sitting here with like, two sweaters on because I, I didn't have the money to buy coal right it, and that's not a look at me aren't i amazing thing it's just like that's what i wanted to do yeah, it there meant is that, no alternative. It meant that much. Yeah, it meant that much. Yeah. There is no alternative. I will do whatever it takes, or I will die in the process. Yes, one of yeah. those. Sorry, um, so you're saying so? How did how did it turn into a business? Yeah, I borrowed some glass sculptures uh, because someone had told me glass is nearly impossible. It's, it's one of the hardest, not impossible, one of the hardest things to photograph. Right, true, true. Yes. Yep. So I borrowed some glass sculptures or uh, sculptures and said, "Can I have a go at photographing these?" And I'm not joking. I was locked in here for three days trying and trying and getting it wrong and running off to new milton because of course 36 pictures on a roll no digital there yes yeah so it's costing me 10 quid every time i got a roll of film wrong it's like card school and when you've only got 40 quid a week to live on that's a, <laughs> yes yeah mm. yeah um but yeah so going to the mini lab and getting the okay, oh what have i done wrong right try something else eventually the penny dropped you're a backlight glass right yes yeah yeah um yeah. Shot these pictures, showed the people. They said, wow, brilliant. They had a brochure made out of them. They told someone else. And a little business just started to okay. unfold yeah. around me. And I kind of thought, well, I wanted to go traveling. Ooh, what do I do? Do I follow the business route or do I just say no? And I chose to follow the business route a bit. Started tramping the streets, portfolio under the arm. Yeah, The internet wasn't there then. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, no. Uh, early 90s. Going around places, showing people pictures, leaving them cards. Uh, I couldn't afford to advertise, so I just used to subtly sort of make it as though, well, of course, I don't need to advertise, so well, if you want me to do some work. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> having a bit of neck and, you know, I think it's, it's, BS. It, it's that thing of, you know, if you walk the walk, then you believe, yeah, you know, not not you believe it, totally. but if you um, act like you yeah. want you want to be perceived, yeah, then by natural... You are perceived as yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's all part of that. It's all in our minds. It, everything begins with a thought. Yes. And by behaving and acting like a professional photographer, I became a professional photographer. photographer. It, yes. It reflects. Yeah. And you, this is what my training is all about. Really, it's like I'm more interested in the person behind the camera. I'm going to toss what camera you use. I'm not interested. They're just things. But anyway, yeah. sorry, we're going off track. No, no, yeah, no. So um, yeah, a business started to evolve. Got clients, and I thought I'll just do this for a year, and then one year became two years. And then three years, and it and it kind of grew, and I found myself doing running a photography business. And what sort of, what sort of clients were they? Was it yeah you know, corporate clients or you know um, uh, private clients? What kind of sort of work were you doing in the, in that in that, in all that sorts, period? All sorts. All uh, sorts. I was going around hotels, seeing if they wanted some you know food photography for the kitchen or stuff for a brochure or, or whatever it may be. I was going around the bridal shops and saying you know do you want me to do some wedding photography? Yeah. I really wedding photography is where it began because during my year I approached lots of photographers and said can I come and work for you for nothing? Um, I just want to learn. Yeah. Um, and Park Photographics in Southampton lovely brilliant guy called Billy uh, Colin Passotti is his real name dead now. Um, he kind of like became my father. Okay. He yeah. totally was brilliant. He taught me so much and I ended up shooting, working with him. I really learned the ropes shooting weddings. And in those days, medium format camera, tripod, light meter. Yes. Uh, you know, 12 on a roll. Um, and really all we were doing in those days was finding an attractive corner with a nice bit of light in it and taking the same picture over and over again with different people in it. Yes. Yeah. You just and it, it was kind of soul destroying, but it, I learned stuff. Well, the other thing as well, that I was, uh, yeah, with the two things, with the shooting on film, Shooting on film, especially medium format, where you've only got the twelve shots as well, and it being a wedding, that's re it's, to me that's a really good way to learn how to be on your game mm. as much as possible because the, you know you're not going to get more pressure than that. No one's coming back next week to reshoot the wedding. No, um, you're on the limitation. Weddings of film. are brilliant. I love weddings. They they give me such a buzz. It's I think it, this is what I've learned. What I like photographing is like yes. it's life. Whether it's a rusty oil drum in a landscape or a or a plane wreck on a beach or, or somebody's wedding. I love capturing life and human beings and people. And as you say, a wedding is to me the most responsible commission in the whole of photography. Yes. I don't care if I'm doing a job for some major client or a five star hotel. If I cock that up, the insurance pays out. 
and we do it again. Yes. You can okay, go... there's some. There's an art director who's annoyed and angry, but we can do it again. Yeah. But a wedding is weird because it's the only commission where you're paid to take photographs, but nobody is there to have their photo taken. Very true. They're there to be at a wedding. Yes. They're there to celebrate a milestone event in somebody's life. And it's that blend of making sure everyone has a fantastic day. And I truly believe that's the photographer's responsibility. I agree as well. Because if they're having a fantastic day, they're laughing, they look great. They'll look great in their pictures. They'll remember it as being fantastic. They'll buy lots of pictures. They'll tell all your friends and you can't get it wrong. Yeah. And you, you can't be ill yeah. either. No, that's right. No, that's right. And you've also you've also made it, you know, what you do as part of an ex, an experience rather than a chore. Yeah, you because know, I yeah, totally. I know most people don't like to be photographed at the best of times. It's mm. you know, weddings. You've got the thing where they they're on their best for the day mm. normally. Yeah, <laughs> but, I could tell some yeah, stories. Yeah, no, so could I, so could I. <laughs> but you've also got that thing of um, I think with weddings, it's actually. Um, you're, you really round off your skill set. You've got the, the you've got to be a pretty good candid reportage photographer to get the ceremony and that kind of side. You've got to be pretty good at organising people and your people's skills to sort out the groups mm. and stuff like that. Mm. And then you've got to have an artistic creative side mm. with the couples' pictures and all that. So you know anyone that criticises doing weddings, I was you know you'll be mm. surprised at how much of your skill set will grow. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge, and it's a hard thing to learn because you can only learn a wedding. By going to and photographing yes. a wedding, yeah, there isn't, there isn't. You can't do. You can't fake one. Up. You can't no, fake no. a wedding because there's a buzz and an energy and a dynamic involved in it. And also, I say, to people, photography is only 30 40 percent of shooting a wedding. Yes, the rest of your brain is de dealing with time management and people issues. You've got to be able to calculate exposure, focal length, depth of field, composition, light subconsciously whilst you're talking to someone and bantering with them to make sure they're having a yeah. great time you know and somebody in the group says i'm going to go off to the loo while you wait for auntie dory and you go no you're not you come back here and all the time you've got to give the the camera skills have to be intuitive this, intuitive yes. it's got to be completely yeah. um unconscious competence well this is this is another thing i was going to you know, bring up later but we, you know, you've touched on it now was the fact that sort of i think with and for people who are learning photography it's I always equate it to when you learn to drive. You learn to drive to pass your test. Mm. That doesn't mean you're a good driver. No. And when you've been driving a few years, it does become an instinctive thing. You don't. If you start to think about what you're doing when you're driving, it all goes wrong. And I find the same with photography. You get to a level where you you kind of instinctively go, "I've got to change the aperture. I've got to change the shutter speed. I've got you know," and that becomes an instinctive thing. Mm. Then your creativity. Mm grows from there because you've t you've taken the the um knowledge base side mm. of it and you've got that locked in mm. and you freed up your thinking then for totally. creativity and yeah. that kind of side i think a lot of people think that image making photography creativity is a case of you see something and then it starts in the camera and then it goes through the camera onto the computer and into your eyes and i say it's completely the reverse yeah you see something get a mental idea a vision of what's interesting it what 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 how you want to do it how you want to portray it what would look great and then it goes from your head down through your arms into the camera and then you just choose the aperture the shutter speed the focal length the whatever that will make what happened in here happen that will bring down it there into in fruition camera. yes yeah it's, yeah it's totally the other way around for yeah. me anyway and, and i think and of course there are technical skills you have to know. Yes. There are techniques yeah. and things. You've got to practice and practice and practice and practice. And I said, go and practice it in the garden. Practice it indoors in the living room on a rainy day. You can learn those techniques, even if the pictures are rubbish. Yes. It doesn't matter. You're learning a technique. And then when you're in that position where there's something exciting going on, you can do it. Yeah. Instead of going, now, what is it? Now, hang on. I want more depth of field. So is that a bigger F number or a smaller F number? Yeah. It's done work. The picture's gone. Yes. you got your time. Practice those things. You just reach.